I hope you are not hungry, because things are about to get mouth-watering here today. If you are not buying it, how about this? Kung Pao chicken, shredded sweet and sour pork, spicy tuna, fried chicken, coconut bread, and chocolate and cookies. How does the mention of these dishes make you feel? Surely, you must agree that there are the makings of a wonderful dinner in there somewhere. Well, if you can believe it, these dishes are part of the items on the menu available to the three taikonauts, as Chinese astronauts are called, currently stationed on the Tianhe Core module of China's space station. During their three-month stay in orbit, they have a supply of over 120 kinds of nutritious food with a long shelf life. I can't help wondering what this makes you feel. Such culinary plenty. I can't help feeling a bit jealous and completely bored at the thought of my food delivery apps. Hmm. Welcome to Space Talk, a special series of A Thousand Whys. I'm Huang Rei. I will be your guide, again, but this time into the mouth-watering world of Chinese space missions. In the next several minutes, we'll try to answer the following questions. What kinds of food get to make it into the space catalog? And what are the most popular dishes among space crews? Now, during their first few days in space, astronauts are likely to feel differently about the dishes they normally would enjoy on Earth, owing to issues related to weightlessness. This is because, while on Earth, our bodily fluids will normally be pulled downwards and toward our feet by the force of gravity. But in space, gravity loses its power, allowing bodily fluids to travel every which way within the body. Bodily fluids will therefore find themselves in inconvenient parts of the head, leading to nasal congestion and the loss of smell, among other strange afflictions. The experience is quite similar to when you get a cold or rhinitis. Your nose gets stuffy and you lose your sense of smell, a vital dimension in your capacity to taste and enjoy food. I mean, what is the point of drinking coffee if you can't enjoy its aroma? You might as well be sipping from a cupful of a strange and bland-tasting liquid. With the sense of smell stifled, something else comes to take its place on space missions. The searing heat of peppers. Spicy food has become a must-have on menus in space. It serves as a way of helping astronauts rediscover and maintain their appetites. For American astronauts, Shrimp cocktails fortified with hot sauce are a popular choice. Chinese taikonauts, on their part, resort to authentic Sichuanese cuisine with its signature hot flavors. Dishes like shredded sweet and sour pork, kung pao chicken, black pepper beef, and pickled cabbage have always dominated the menu on Chinese space missions. Take kung pao chicken, for example. The dish is a combination of chicken, gold peanuts, and bright red chili peppers. The sauce is based on a light sweet and sour mixture, tipped up with a trace of citron pepper that makes your lips tingle pleasantly. Doesn't it just make your mouth water? The appeal of Sichuanese cooking to the palate certainly is an important consideration that makes qualify it as space food. But more importantly, the food comprises portions in solid form and meat off the bone. 
meaning that all the ingredients can be consumed and that no remains are left behind. This eliminates the risk of food remains clogging air vents, contaminating equipment, or, God forbid, getting stuck in an astronaut's eyes, mouth, or nose. No! Over the years, efforts have been made to expand the menu offerings available to Chinese taikonauts. New food items have been developed to increase the variety of the food available on crewed missions. But if we turn the clock back to 2003, we notice that Yang Li Wei, the taikonaut aboard the Shenzhou 5 spacecraft involved in China's first manned space mission, certainly did not benefit from the rich variety of delicious cuisines currently on offer to the country's space heroes. Technological limitations at that time meant that Yang Li Wei relied on a supply of cold pastries, like mooncakes, to keep up his strength during the 21-hour space flight. A video clip from the time shows how Yang would take his meal, opening his mouth, and waiting for a bite-sized morsel of food in cube form to come to him. The manner in which he consumed his food may seem fun, but the flavor would definitely have been unappealing. Two years on from Yang Li Wei's pioneering exploits, Chinese taikonauts got to enjoy meals of hot rice thanks to a heater tucked away on the Shenzhou 6 spacecraft. Rehydratable vegetables and freeze-dried fruits were also brought on the mission. The taikonauts were able to enjoy their vegetables, much like we do here on Earth, just by adding a little bit of water to them. Fruits in their natural form have become available in flight cabins and on space stations in more recent crewed missions. A video footage released by CCTV shows Tang Hongbo, one of the three taikonauts currently stationed at China Space Station, tucking into a fresh apple and then disposing of the remains in a waste bag. Fresh apples are seen stored away in vacuum-sealed containers on the station. After years of research and development, Chinese food scientists have been able to make over 120 kinds of food available to the country's spacemen. They comprise starch-based staples, meat, vegetables, fruits, snacks, condiments, and beverages. Personal tastes have also been taken into consideration. During the Shenzhou 7 mission of 2008, various types of seasoning and different sources were loaded onto the spacecraft. The presence of vinegar on the flight would have been a great source of comfort to Jing Haipeng, a vinegar-loving taikonaut from Shanxi province, where the condiment is a great local favorite. Before each mission, taikonauts were given the opportunity to taste all the types of food available on the flight and to pick out their favorites. Pretty cool, isn't it? You arrive in a strange world with your favorite snacks neatly tucked away in your backpack. Yeah. Yeah. It is often said that food can serve as a great consolation for people traveling in the strange land, offering the sense of familiarity that the things we already know and love are able to give. The same applies to our spacemen. Taking a bite of their favorite food helps alleviate their homesickness as the sojourn in outer space. This is especially the case for spacemen stationed in orbit for long periods of time. The sense of confinement and isolation certainly weighs on their minds. 
and a wide selection of familiar foods can help to mitigate their prolonged sense of privation. Humanity appears destined to continue on its unrelating quest to explore outer space. It seems inevitable, therefore, that humans will need to learn to survive and work in space for extended periods of time, and possibly even indefinitely. The intensive efforts going into researching and developing space food doubtlessly are essential if humanity's space dream is to be achieved. It seems fair to suggest these efforts will all get their just desserts in the course of time. Thank you for listening to this episode of Space Talk. For more, please search for A Thousand Wise on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you may find your favorite podcasts. I'm Paul Ray. I hope you are able to join us again next time. 再见 Bye for now.